Today I want to talk about the pigment volume concentration because it is a critical factor in paint formulation that has a significant effect on the properties. The pigment volume concentration is the ratio of pigment volume to the total volume of the paint. And it's actually not only the volume of the pigments that is considered, but also the volume of the fillers. And very important in dry state. As you are increasing the pigment volume concentration, there will be less binder available to cover the surface of the pigments until the binder can no longer fully wet or cover the pigment particles. And this leads to the formation of small voids that are filled with air. Now the ratio of pigment to binder in a coating at which the pigment particles are just fully wetted by the binder is called the critical pigment volume concentration. If you only add slightly more pigments, you'll immediately get voids or spaces that are filled with air. Well, obviously the pigment volume concentration affects quite some properties of the paint. For example, the density. Pigments usually have a higher density as the binder matrix and therefore the density at first increases with increasing pigment volume concentration. However, if you surpass the critical volume concentration, you get more and more air into the system, which is why the density decreases again above the critical pigment volume concentration. The porosity is another property that is affected by the pigment volume concentration. Not so much below the CPVC because there, there is enough binder available to wet all the pigments creating a continuous non-porous film. However, above the CPVC, voids and spaces between the pigment particles form creating a porous structure. Now a porous coating can have certain drawbacks. It may be more permeable to water, oxygen and other corrosive substances, which can lead to a decrease in the durability and protective properties of the coating. Also, the coating may be more brittle and less adhesive to the substrate. For these reasons, in many applications, it's desirable to keep the PVC below the critical PVC to ensure the formation of a dense, non-porous and durable film. However, there are also certain applications where you want a certain degree of porosity. And if you want, you can discuss in the comments in which cases uh, you need that. The last property that I want to discuss in this video and that is influenced by the pigment volume concentration is the tensile strength. The tensile strength of a coating is a measure of how much stress it can withstand before breaking. Now adding pigments and fillers has usually a reinforcing effect because you are building a composite material. However, the loss in the continuity of the coating that occurs at the critical pigment volume concentration leads to a weaker, more brittle coating with lower tensile strength. Now from the previous slides you might have gotten an impression of how important it is to know the critical volume concentration of your system. So how do you actually determine it? Well, there are two different ways. First, you can calculate the critical pigment volume concentration, or you can determine it via experiments. To calculate the CPVC, you can use this formula here. It contains the oil absorption number of your pigment, the pigment density, as well as the density of linseed oil that is used to determine the oil absorption number. 
However, it's important to note that the CPVC can depend on a number of factors, including the specific type of pigment and binder that is used, their particle sizes, shapes, and other factors. Therefore, the calculation might give you a rough idea of the CPVC, but it often needs to be determined experimentally to be sure. And you can do that by determining the properties that we previously discussed. Now, before you leave, I want you to think about these three questions. First, what is the maximum PVC that you can achieve? Is it 100%? Is it 90%? Is it 70%? Let me know in the comments. Then second, what PVC should the zinc rich epoxy coating have? It's not about the actual number, it's maybe more about should it be higher than the CPVC or lower than the CPVC and why? And the third question, what PVC would be desirable for an indoor latex paint dispersion? It's again more should it be above or below the CPVC? And, of course, the reason why. Write me the answers in, in the comments. That's it about pigment volume concentration. If the video was helpful to you, then I would really appreciate if you hit the like button. Thanks for that and bye.